and gentlemen, we'd better start again. And here we have um, a, a number of talks from APA members, again on the broad uh, topic of value of uh, digital information. Okay. Okay, I, I don't use it. It's fine, no problem. So thank you very much, David, and uh, thank you again for coming here uh, to, to Western for, uh, for this conference. So this is uh, the first one of uh, four presentations on value for, uh, for organizations. I was supposed to address the scientific value of data, but I am focusing mainly on, on Earth observation data. And uh, my name is Mirko Albani, and I am uh, working here at ESRIN in the ground segment uh, department, and I'm the responsible of the long-term data preservation program here at, uh, at ESA. So as uh, uh, Gunther Kolam, my head of department, has presented this morning, we are dealing here in ESRIN with the, the Earth, observation, uh, Earth observation data. So we are basically acquiring, archiving in different facilities and making available to users the data from, from Earth observation missions. And uh, basically, we are dealing with the, uh, Earth observation data from ESA missions, but also from third party missions like uh, American, Indian missions uh, or Japanese ones. So this is just to show that, uh, that we, have, we are dealing with more than 40, uh, 50 missions at the same time. And all these data are uh, archived in our, in our facilities and, make, and uh, are made available to, to, to users. Of course, this creates uh, difficulties in terms of uh, the capability to preserve all this, uh, all this data because these data are heterogeneous, the volume of the archives is growing, and we need to provide a coherent access uh, and uh, discovery of, uh, of this data for, uh, for the users and to perform continuous actions to maintain this, uh, this, data, this data available. What kind of, uh, of missions do we have? First of all, we have uh, uh, experimental missions. These missions are uh, defined and implemented starting from the requirements from the scientific community. So we have several iterations. This is, for example, the case for the, the Earth Explorers. And um, these are uh, um, uh, edge of technology missions with very uh, uh, edge of technology instruments that are selected according to discussions held with the scientific community. So there are several iterations, several interactions with the scientific community. And then after all this interaction, a specific mission is, is selected and is then implemented. And these are basically, now we have three uh, Earth Explorer missions uh, uh, in orbit. Uh, one is studying the glaciers, the other one is for the gravity field, and uh, the third one is uh, for soil moisture and uh, uh, ocean circulation. And then we have operational missions, like for example the meteorological missions ones. Experimental missions are often uh, behaving as precursors of uh, operational missions. For example, uh, meteorological missions are the ones uh, uh, currently operated by UMETSAT. Th these missions are developed at ESA and then handed over to uh, UMETSAT for operations. And these missions are basically supporting different kind of applications and operational services like uh, weather forecasting, oil spill monitoring, and, uh, and many others. And uh, for example, the Sentinels will be operational missions. They will be the, the, the future uh, missions launched by ESA in the context of the GMES program. And they have also uh, been developed starting from precursors that were experimental missions like ERS-1 and ERS-2. So what kind of data do we archive at ESA? I say data from ESA missions, but also data from third party missions that are also selected uh, according to a procedure according, uh, that is involved in the scientific community. So basically we try also to provide data to the European scientific uh, users and scientific community from missions that are able to fill gaps because data are not available through uh, ESA missions, for example, or um, solving particular needs from, uh, from the European uh, community. So there is a specific procedure to select this, uh, these missions. This is basically to say that the kind of missions that we launch and therefore the kind of data that we have in our archive are carefully selected involving all the scientific <coughs> community. So they have intrinsically a value before, before, even before launching the, the mission. So several studies in the past have been uh, have addressed the value of Earth observation systems uh, data and also information. For example, several studies were done in the GMES program, both from uh, ESA and also the European Commission. Uh, there are various definitions of, of, uh, of the value of uh, data and information. I just took one of, uh, one of them. Value information can be described as uh, an outcome of choice whereby individuals may be willing to pay for information depending on the degree of uncertainty and the opportunity they face. So basically, in this case, uh, uh, considering this kind of uh, definition, the value of information is related to the degree of uncertainty that is faced by the decision maker, but also what is the, uh, at stake in terms of the outcome of this decision. 
basically the uh, larger the degree of uncertainty or the stake is, uh, is in place, then the highest is the value of the data and of the information that can be used to take this uh, decision and uh, uh, to have the, the final outcome of this. Of course, the value of the data is also depending uh, on the fact that there are, if there are uh, available uh, substitute information and data. So if there is a substitute information, then the value is basically led to the incremental precision that you can have in the decision using this, uh, this, uh, this data. The case for Earth observation data is, is, uh, is quite uh, clear in, due to the fact that Earth observation data is basically unique. For example, for climate monitoring applications and several other applications, these data are not substitutable by, by other sources. So it, this means that the value that they have is really, is, really, is really high. This is just an example. I will not go into the, 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 the details. Also, this is taken from one of this, uh, of this study. And basically, this is uh, related to the GMS. Uh, value of information, but we can assume we can associate also this to uh, earth observation data in general. And we see that these data are useful in several different applications like air quality, marine, flooding, conflict resolution, humanitarian aid, seismic applications, forest fires, uh, forest ecosystems, and so on. And this study has tried to give a, a percentage, a value to what can be the benefit uh, of this kind of program. Uh, that means of the uh, availability of information generated starting from Earth observation uh, data in these different uh, in these different domains, and the same is also for climate change application, deforestation, uh, desertification. So, the kind of uh, applications and the kind of areas where you can use Earth observation data is really huge, and uh, these data uh, have the possibility to allow decisions on all these domains by policymakers and, and stakeholders that have a very big impact on, on our planet and on our economy. Just to give some examples and some nice, uh, nice pictures, this is a, an example of the use that is related to the Arctic sea ice uh, melting. melting. <coughs> this is basically a long-term series. You see uh, the, the movie is now showing data from the 80s and is going up to 2010. And this shows how the um, Arctic sea ice is, is melting, so what is the amount of um, ice that is not, uh, not anymore available since some, some years. This has been generated using data from four different satellites, and this then creates the needs for preserving not only the data and long-term series of data, but also the information that is associated to, that, to, this, uh, to this data in order to be able to combine the data from different instruments and uh, even different, uh, different organizations. So this one is basically showing that from 78 to 2010, this is the amount of uh, uh, ice that is uh, it's not anymore available. And this is, uh, has a big impact because, uh, first of all, from terms of navigation, there can be different routes that are possible over that, uh, that area, and this is impacting economy. But also, of course, uh, this is creating a, a rise in the sea level and uh, problems in the availability of water um, in, uh, and, uh, and so on. So this kind of phenomena is what our scientists need to be able to monitor, and this is what Earth observation data are, are needed for, as an example. Other examples are forest fires uh, monitoring. This is uh, related to 2007. Images taken from the MVSAT uh, Mary's <coughs> instrument, and there you can clearly see where the fires were available in Greece. You can imagine this is taken from uh, 800 kilometers uh, height, so it's pretty impressive the, the kind of fire that were happening there. And this kind of images can then be used to estimate the damages after fires. So there are other images, I don't have them here, that shows really black parts in Greece after the, after the fires, showing what are the, the burnt uh, areas. This is another example related to earthquakes. So this is the, an interferogram showing the, the um, displacement, uh, the surface displacement, uh, displacement uh, uh, due, to the, due to the earthquake in, in L'Aquila 2009. So these kind of things can be used to estimate the damage afterwards and to estimate where the earthquake was and uh, for basically disaster uh, um, assessment. This is another example, and you, as you can see, these things are always uh, often also on uh, newspapers. Uh, oil spill, the prestige tanker that were uh, sunk into at the, near Galicia in, in Spain. So with the uh, ASAR images again from ENISA satellite, you can see the uh, oil spill in the, in the sea and then estimate where there is the oil spill and how to try to uh, react to this, uh, to this pollution. So this was taken in 2002. 
<coughs> another example uh, or on sea level rise. This is showing basically the global mean, mean sea levels rise in the in the years. So this is uh, using data from 92 to 2012. And this is uh, uh, generated using data and combining data from several different missions and different instruments. So again, it is important to preserve the data, but also the information that is necessary and uh, fundamental in order to combine this, uh, this kind of things. And this shows also another important thing that is not only uh, fundamental to preserve the data that we acquire today, but is fundamental for several applications also to preserve long-term series of data. So we need to preserve also the data that were acquired several years ago in order to be able to make this kind of, uh, of analysis. And these are the kind of analysis necessary for any kind of climate uh, application. And of course, we need to ensure also that all the quality of the data is, uh, is uh, made available to, to scientists. This is just another example, another instrument, uh, again on board uh, Envisat, uh, South Hemisphere Ozone Hole from 95 to 2011. So these kind of things are allowing to monitor what is the ozone, uh, ozone hole, and this brings uh, uh, feedback in terms of uh, uh, health uh, and safety of people uh, and uh, skin cancers and, and, and so on. Last slide, just another example. I've taken basically random examples, so I, I might have many other of, the, of these. Uh, this is a concentration of uh, the dioxide carbon in the, in the atmosphere, so it shows how this changes depending on the, on the period of the, of the year, but also it shows how this is increasing in the years from 2003, for example, to 2012. So there is an increase, and this is due to industries and, uh, and so on. So this kind of instruments allows us then to come to Kyoto protocols or to this kind of, uh, of uh, conferences and to take decisions for policymakers, depending on, on the results of, this, uh, of these studies. And as I said at the beginning, this is something that is very important. These are news that comes every day, basically, on the newspapers, uh, everywhere. So this is something that is really very sensitive uh, from, uh, it's a really very sensitive uh, domain. Last slide. So basically, it is very difficult to associate a value to Earth observation data, to, have a, to give a finite value to this. What we can say is that they are unique and not repeatable. So once a satellite has passed in a certain place and has taken a measurement with the instrument, this measurement is not repeatable. So the satellite will not be able to pass again at the same time in the same place. So every data is basically unique. And this data also constitute a humankind asset. Here you can see, for example, Landsat data that are data from a, a US missions. They are already part of the UNESCO uh, memory of the world heritage. So these are considered a humankind asset as a, a monument or a town because it's, it's part of the history of our, of our planet. These data are fundamental for monitoring global change and our planet overall, and to define policies, actions to react to the global warming, to the global change to our, to our planet. And these decisions, these uh, uh, actions that are taken, starting from the results of uh, the information generated from this data, is affecting, directly affecting human lives and world economy. These data are also supporting several commercial applications, but again, scientific applications. And of course, they have also an incremental value when they are combined together and with data also from other sources and other disciplines. So it is really very important to uh, try to have as much as possible interoperability also with other domains to, all to combine this data, not only among instruments from different missions as in one of the slides that I showed before, but also to combine this data with, fr with data from other research disciplines, other domains, to generate added value and, uh, and basically new, new knowledge. So basically, this data, as said, need to be preserved. They need to be preserved together with all the information or knowledge that is necessary to use and understand them. And this is not often the case, because there are several things that need to be preserved together with the, the bits, with the, the zero and ones that we, got, we get from the satellites, in order to make sure that these things are usable now, but also by future generations. They need to be curated and valorized, so we need continually to valorize this data and add value to them. And of course, we need to make all of that accessible to users, so the open access of these things uh, and this data to users is, uh, is really fundamental. 
And uh, just another couple of words, uh, uh, at ESA we are now uh, running an LTDP program since 2009 that is basically uh, dealing with the preservation and the, um, try to prevent the loss of Earth observation data from uh, our, our archives and trying to maximize and to do what, what is in the, in the blue blocks. Now we, are, we have a ministerial council, uh, council uh, next, uh, next week uh, that is basically the meeting with all, our, all the ministers of our member states where they will decide uh, what is a programs to fund and what is the level of funding that they will provide for, this, uh, for these programs. And we are also presenting there another LTDP program for the next five years slides that will address the preservation not only of Earth observation data but also of data from uh, other space-based uh, um, instruments available at, uh, at ESA like data from interplanetary exploration, international space stations, and so on. So now the idea is uh, to extend what we have done in the Earth observation domain, where uh, we have a very good cooperation in Europe with several stakeholders and all the European space agencies uh, and uh, uh, Earth observation data providers, to extend this uh, framework also to uh, embrace data from, from other disciplines and uh, to try to have a coherent framework at ESA, but also with all the European uh, stakeholders. So that's all from my side, thank you for your attention.